integrity uh, is re represented here. Let's go to the next. And so I mentioned David Afado Siqueiros. So here is Siqueiros uh, in the center, one of the important Mexican muralists. And uh, he's standing next to one of the people that work with him in this an experimental workshop. Uh, and that person, of course, was Jackson Pollock. And Jackson Pollock uh, never forgot the lessons that he learned uh, from, from Diego Rivera. Diego Rivera felt that it was important to, uh, to make a statement to create murals of this time, rather than uh, the you know working with temper paint and uh, the way that in plaster, the way that people worked, he used uh, industrial products. He used spray paint. He used a uh, uh, lacquer. Uh, he used um, you know paint used on cars and so forth. He would all he would experiment, and then he would have this lazy Susan that would spin uh, on a flat surface and send the paint going off in different directions. I mean, he would try everything. And of course, Jackson Pollock is paying attention to this because he would be dripping paint on a flat surface later on himself, also inspired, of course, by uh, Native American sand painting. But this is an important connection, how American artists were inspired by uh, European or Mexican artists uh, in their own development uh, along the way. And the painting that Siqueiros did with these techniques is called Collective Suicide. Uh, this uh, is a painting that shows some of those techniques, the dripping uh, of the paint, uh, as, as I mentioned before, or what he would call the controlled uh, accident. Uh, but it also shows the invasion of the conquist the Spanish conquistadors. Uh, on, you'd see them over on the lower right there. Uh, and, and they're invading. Uh, and so the um, Chichimec uh, Indians, uh, rather than submit, to, to conquest uh, and becoming enslaved, uh, committed a collective suicide and uh, jump. So you see that in the lower left there uh, where they're jumping off uh, the, um, you know, the hill or the mountain. Okay, let's go to the next. So while this is all going on in Europe, uh, the Nazis, uh, the, 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 the uh, under Hitler were now the National Socialists were persecuting artists. They were persecuting those individuals, writers, poets, painters, and they were lumping them together. And they created this show called Entata Kunst, or the Degenerate Art Show, which took place in Munich in 1937. And they would cram their works together. They would write graffiti around them and make it look as unpleasant and as, and as insane as they could. And so there you see some uh, officials sitting and contemplating some of the, the works and the way in which they've been arranged. Okay, let's go to the next. So now prior to the Second World War, there was a trial run, if you will. Uh, and it was the bombing of the Basque uh, town of Guernica. Uh, and, um, uh, and it was bombed uh, under the, the auspices of of a general uh, Franco who wanted to take over the Republic. And, um, and so he enlisted the German Luftwaffe the, uh, and the Italian allies of, of Germany to fly in and, um, and carpet bomb of uh, the town and hundreds and hundreds of people were, were killed. And so Picasso was originally going to be creating a, uh, a, a painting for the uh, Spanish uh, exhibition uh, uh, the World's Fair, uh, and um, uh, and when this happened in the, in in the midst of that, he you know changed course what he was originally planning to do, and he created this composition. And you can see uh, that the uh, the the horse there in the center, and it's got the stake uh, in it, a spear in it. It's being impaled. Uh, you know that's like the press, right? And the press is being attacked, right? That sounds a little familiar. Uh, and um, you can see the dismembered bodies of figures, uh, you, the mother weeping and crying, the dead child, the, the building over on the right in flames. And a minotaur is observing this, uh, probably Picasso himself, uh, since he associated himself with the, um, the minotaur, looking over and observing this, this, this uh, bull. And then you have this eye, like the eye of Providence, uh, looking over uh, and observing all of this. 
uh, at the same time. Okay, let's go to the next one. So again, around this period of time, Billie Holiday uh, is approached uh, with a song uh, that was written by a Bronx English teacher by the name of um, Abe Maripol. Uh, and the song was called Strange Fruit and was based on uh, Maripol um, learning about um, uh, these two, uh, the lynching of two uh, Americans by the name of Thomas Shipp and Abram Smith uh, in the South in an estimated crowd of 5,000 people watching uh, during this uh, period of Jim Crow. And so this idea of strange fruit, uh, the song, you know, part of the lyrics is, um, you know, black bodies swaying in the southern breeze, strange fruit hanging from the poplar trees. And this was such a searing and powerful song. And she sang it at Cafe Society in Greenwich Village, which was the first integrated nightclub in Manhattan the first integrated nightclub in Manhattan. Uh, and so my father went, went there himself um, uh, just before it closed uh, in the late forties. Okay, let's go to the next. Steven. Yes. I, I, wanna, I wanna sort of pop in here. We've got a, another 15 minutes left to our session and um, certainly okay. Billy Holiday's piece is one that just, has, you know, many, 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 many of us are so familiar with it. And I want to kind of draw this, you're building so beautifully the way the arts have captured mm -hmm. through the era, you know, through the eons, um, what's been happening at a, on so many different levels in society. How do you see that showing up right now? This has been an extraordinary year. Where are you seeing that the artists have are are, are moving us forward and 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 reflecting things back? How do you see that showing up? I, I think it's showing up in a, in a lot of different ways. It's showing up in in memorial paintings uh, for people, of course, like George Floyd uh, and uh, Breonna Taylor and others. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's coming out in music. I think it's being addressed, um, you know, by people like uh, Kendrick Lamar. I think it's being, um, and of course, uh, Clifton Anderson. I think in the visual arts itself, uh, you know, people are are finding uh, their voice, finding ways to communicate uh, uh, the stories that are affecting us today. Uh, and I think that um, it and it, it's in very many different mediums. Um, I think if we go just very quickly to uh, toward the end of the of the. Uh, slide series here let's say to uh let's take us we're going to move through these you have the doll studies and all of those by uh, uh miles davis you know that was a pioneering effort we'll just keep going through these norman lewis you know showing uh you know the marches this over here the peace symbol coming out of the campaign for nuclear disarmament 1958 keep going uh, that's the button that they got there. It comes from the semaphores, you know, used in the in the um, in the military. Uh, the disasters of war by Goya that inspired uh, Gerald Holt Holtham, who designed the the peace button, the peace symbol. And then Bayard Rustin, who was an ally of Martin Luther King, brought that button because he was there in 1958. Brought it to the United States, and that's what how the peace symbol got started in the United States, okay? All right, let's let's keep going. Just, uh, Norman Rockwell, my uncle's work, uh, his photographs, uh, Marvin Gaye, what's going on, you know, chronicling what's going on, the environment, the ecology, police brutality, all of those things in the music, black dimensions in art. Um, again, 1970, Earth, Wind and Fire. Notice the connection between, just back up for a second. Notice the connection between Earth, Wind and Fire and, and this fusion of Africa, of, of higher of technology, you can see in the album cover, and Wakanda uh, up there in the upper right in Black Panther. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, Crack is Whack, or Keith Haring, of course, and, uh, and even Cosby uh, had promoted Black art in his work. Let's keep going. Uh, Charles White, yep. And we also have people like Daisha Devon Harris, you know, like Charles White, her, her figures have dignity. They are people who are brought from uh, unknown sources, don't know the exact identity of these individuals, 
but she gives them new life and photographs them through water, through water uh, in different seasons. This one also, ye have no chains to bind my freeborn soul. Coming from poetry, the poetry of Langston Hughes, she fuses this together. Let's go. Uh, Marcus Kwame Anderson, yes. Uh, my son, and some of his photographs from Zagati Park and Million Man March, freedom, dress, how you, your clothes. Uh, John Dragonetti, uh, Black Lives Matter, right? The mass, part of the COVID meets Main Street. Some of my work talking about the craziness of these times. That's one of the ways I express what you were talking about. Um, yeah, okay, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, uh, uh, Shepard Ferry. Okay, we the people, right? And of course, the memorials for George Floyd, you know? Um, and here's a father, proud father with his daughter. And then of course here, right here in Saratoga Springs, people gathering together at High Rock Park and in Putnam Place Alley uh, for Darrell Mount, you know? And, uh, and um, his death, you know, commemorating him and, and seeking justice for Darrell. The artwork in the posters, you know, designed by uh, Thomas Dragonetti and Kim Harris, locals, again, um, this is reflected uh, in there. And you see that little square up there in the upper with the little dots there? That, that's the surveillance uh, drone that was watching during the time. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. Yeah. And so all around the country, you see people, black, brown, white, coming together. Uh, Banksy even got in on it. You know, he's always in on it in some way or another. Uh, you know, these people are being almost whipped out of out of their their territory as as, you know, new development is taking place, gentrification and so forth. Keep going. Uh, and this is one that he did for uh, an artist named uh, Zara uh, Dogen. And uh, and of course, Theaster Gates, a very important artist who is transforming his community in Chicago uh, in different various ways and also. Next one, Bill Strickland, uh, Manchester Craftsville in Pittsburgh. Again, artists who are now transforming their communities through economic empowerment, through training and, and rethinking and reimagining. And that's why the arts are so important because they challenge us to reimagine, to seek the positive, to seek the possibilities. And so Daniel Koch, with Daniel, Daniel Koch a 25 year old from, from Atlanta said, she realized that she might get more people to stop and hear what she had to say if she tried to draw her ideas. So until you find it here and address it there, nothing changes in the world, right? And so that basically sums up all of these artists. You know, they found it within their hearts, you know, that they wanted, they needed to express, to have the freedom to express themselves and to make that difference. I, I think um, particularly that last one, I, I love that it it ties right to the now and, and a young person who's utilizing all these different platforms uh, that we have and to to bring forward our connection and messaging. And Steve and I were throwing around an idea that we'll tag into at the end about a project over the weekend. We want to art up Toga. But right now, let's open it up right now. Um, Bailey has been um, helping us uh, Zoom tag. If you could just um, check in the chat, let's see if there are folks who might have a question for Stephen to put forward. If you could help us with that. Thank you. Um, thank you, Julie, who, who said it was really, really informative. Um, any questions for Stephen right now? I know we're just absorbing this push, this train through through history and how much the arts have been integrated in all of all of these moments of change and leading up to the change. You know, it also starts when you're young, you know, that that parent that encourages the child, you know, to draw, start with a line, you know. One of the things that I that I share with my students when, when they start it, they all have different kinds of backgrounds, and so forth. We start with a line. Start with a line. You know, some people say, I can't draw. I don't know how to draw. I don't, you know. Okay, start with a line. But there are different kinds of lines. So happy line, sad line, angry line, peaceful lines. And so they create what they, in every, any medium that they can to express those different emotions through line. Then the second part of it is to integrate those together into one composition. 
you're the director, that's the stage, these are the characters, what roles do you give them and how do they interact, how do they interface? And I think that's one way in because anytime you look at a work of art, you, you're, you're absorbing information that's, that's designed in a particular way, you know, in terms of curves and straight lines and how they interact and inter in the dynamic between those as well, the negative space, the positive space, all of this. And so in life in general, you know, we're always dealing with different kinds of forces, different kinds of energy, and, and how we integrate that through our own experience as well as in life is part of that challenge for us as a nation, as well as, as individuals. It's, it starts with starting. <laughs> it, it starts with just saying yes to following the impulse. S Steve and I, <clears throat> we were, you know, how, how do we bring this in um, into the moment of, of Dr. King's legacy and taking things forward? They, music was such a profound element Yes. Through through the civil rights movement, um, and we go on from there. But it abounds around us now. I, I don't know um, if you've taken notice of all the different Black Lives Matter signs around town and how they show up in such different ways in different places. And we wanted to to sort of challenge folks as part of the Dr. King challenge this weekend to write. To, to photograph, to, to see where things show up creatively in and around your daily life in your world. It had, could be something that is your own expression mm -hmm. uh, of something that you, you film or a, a, a spoken word piece or a line on the paper that is your line. Mm -hmm. uh, take a photograph of it. Uh, those of you who know how to put this stuff up on Instagram, hashtag art up toga. I just threw that into the, the, um, the chat there. And you can also email to us at art up toga at Gmail. And I'll put that in here too. But as we're going to try to collect all this stuff by Sunday night, and um, we're, 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 we're um, uh, excited and uh, a little nervous to think that we're going to be able to pull it all together and try to present Monday afternoon as part of the celebration, community celebration session that we're having at two o'clock on Monday with Professor Loretta Ross is joining us. She is uh, has a new book coming out, Calling In the Calling Out Culture. So um, what do you have to say to the art up, Professor Tyson? <laughs> <laughs> well said. That said it all, right, right oh, there. Right. Any, any, any feedback? I'd love to hear um, community thoughts on what you've seen today. What struck you? Did something yes. in the video impact you particularly hard? There was mm. elements that were curated. Uh, yeah. Unmute yourself and um, and share. And Leslie, Bailey's going to help us. There's yeah, a question really. in the chat for Stephen Leslie. Took the words right into my mouth. <laughs> good, good job. Oh, from oh, from Jean. I, I, yeah. Can you read it? Can you see it, Stephen? Yeah. What are the challenges for artists of color to be seen more broadly uh, in, into the mainstream? And actually, that was uh, uh, Eunice's response was Instagram is a powerful visual medium and has certainly been used for activism. Uh, I, for those who are, you know, learning the new platforms and so forth, I, I think that's absolutely true. And I think that, you know, today you have to be familiar with those other uh, platforms. There's no, there's no way around it. That's how you reach your audience. The, the legacy, you know, media and so forth like that, and, you know, going to a gallery and, you know, or hoping that your work is, it, it, it's just not working that, that, and particularly in this period of time that we've been living through, it's just not working that same way. You have to definitely be online and that's the way to do it. I think it also takes, you know, it will always be a partnership, you know, of people, you know, of, of, of people of goodwill, you know, and, and to reach out, you know, to each other, you know, to find our, our connections, you know? It's like this art up experience is finding, it's looking for your inspiration, you know, it's looking around and seeing where do I see that in my environment? Because as you look for it, you begin to discover it more within yourself. It's a way of opening up 
yourself. So, but as Leslie said, um, you have to start. You have to start. Beth, Beth offered a question. She wants to know, what does your art personally say, your art about social justice and activism? I think my, my work does not speak, not all of my work speaks directly to uh, a uh, social activism uh, in the in in a, in a very prescribed sense. Let let me explain what I mean. Um, the piece that you have on on the uh, MLK Saratoga uh, page, uh, where you see my my some of my information there, uh, it's it's a piece that's called uh, "Taking It Forward." taking it forward. It's an abstract piece. What I did was I found this piece that um, I had started a number of years ago. And, and I said, you know, I need to do something with this. And so what I did was I edited out certain places and then I worked over those areas in new areas. And I found a way to integrate what was left with what was new. I took the best from the past. I incorporated it into the future, folded into the future while moving forward. That's the Sankofa concept from West Africa. That's the idea of finding value, of going back and retrieving, of reclaiming, taking that and, and carrying it forward. And I think as a country, as a society, if you want to think about social activism in that sense, how we need to take stock. We need to look at our situation in this country. We need to look at it. We need to face it, understand the parts that don't work and take the best of, of what does and build on it and continue to build and move forward. I go back to stay in the past, but to move forward. So in that sense, that philosophy, that activism can be, is, is reflected and can be ignited through this particular ethos, which mm -hmm. is what I think Dr. King also spoke to through his writings and by his life experience. And, and the word for that is Sankofa? Sankofa, Sankofa, that's, yes, S-A-N-K-O-F-A. Wow. In fact, Harry Belafonte uh, has an organization uh, called Sankofa. No, no, uh, it's just coincidental. Yeah, but the spirit is there. So Stephen, what's unfolding next for you right now? So what's unfolding next is to, to return to the studio, to prepare for classes, uh, and uh, to also reach out to, again, friends, relatives, people who are isolated, people who need to, 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 uh, to, to, be, to be recognized and appreciated that they, are, that they are still here, that they are not forgotten and that we are all part of one family. I have to sometimes remind myself of that, but, I'm also, um, but I am conscious of the fact that we all are connected. There is that idea of interbeing. Leslie, you, you repeated this uh, a number of times, uh, quoting, I guess, Dr. King, you know, what affects one directly affects all of us indirectly. And we need to keep to be reminded of that and remind ourselves. Yes, yes, Ubuntu, it's very powerful stuff. Thank you, thank you so much for joining us, Stephen. And thank you community for being here. Thank We're you. launched, oh my goodness, um, <laughs> you know, and all of its little glitches and all. Uh, a reminder that the dance party is, uh, doors are open until 9.15. If you pre-registered for that, then uh, please shift on over to that Zoom room. And then we'll get rolling again in the morning. Uh, Jean Fay opens our day with a workshop on keeping balance for folks who are doing change work. Uh, please share where you can and continue the conversation. This weekend is about let's talk Saratoga. What's happening out there is happening here and what happens here, we radiate out there. We wanna change this conversation. 
Amen. Thank you all for being here. Many blessings. Much peace. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Leslie, and thank all of you. It's been great. I wish we had another hour. <laughs> it's a great weekend. Join in. Yeah, thank you so much. You had a great presentation. I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Bella. Appreciate it. Of course. Thank you. Death assisting too? No? Okay. Well, everybody, everybody's great. Thank you, Stephen. We're going to keep this conversation going again, yes, I right? See. Definitely, definitely. No, Bring the artists been, in. This has been fun. Good. Fun. Thank you for all your work and effort and time in here. It was extraordinary. <laughs>